Cyanogen 11 has finally made its way to the HTC One M8, and today we're going to be checking it out. Let's get started. <laughs> So I'm sure all of you are familiar with Cyanogen Mod as it is probably one of the most popular ROMs ever created and it's actually even kind of becoming its own operating system and it's even its own company. So they've actually released this ROM a while ago for the M8, maybe a month or so and I didn't review it yet because it wasn't stable enough since these are nightlies but I think it's finally stable enough to use as a daily driver and I haven't run into any bugs yet. The one downside currently with all the stock Android ROMs is you do lose some cool features like the editing option in the gallery where you can do that dual camera effect which is basically why the camera is there. The only stock ROM that actually supports that is the Google Edition ROM. All the other ones like AOKP, Signature Mod, Liquid Smooth don't support that yet. But I have heard from different sources that you can find those different features online and download them or you could download some of them from the Play Store too. But in return, since this is Cyanogen Mod, we are going to get a lot of awesome features. Starting off with the first new setting you will see, we have a home option and this is just a quick way to customize which launcher you want to use. Under lock screen we get our usual stuff like customizing slider shortcuts, adding battery status, and we actually do lose the double tap feature to wake the screen. That was a HTC Sense feature, so it is sad that that is gone. Other than that, we also do get some custom widget options, and you could definitely play around and get that to your liking. Next, we get to the themes option, which was recently updated by Cyanogen Mod. You can basically search up CM11 themes in the Play Store, and you'll get a bunch of different options. As you can see, this is just a random theme I'll download. It's actually from the OnePlus One. So you let it quickly download, shouldn't take that long. And then you go back into your settings or and into the themes option. And as you can see, if we click on themes, we get this new option to apply it. And depending on the theme, you get to choose between icons, the style, the wallpapers, the boot animations. This specific theme didn't have that many options, but once you apply it, as you can see, whatever you chose comes in effect. Interface is probably where you'll be spending most of your time customizing your device, as this is where all the features come in. So under status bar, we get some stuff like the option to change our battery status. We can remove the clock if you want. You can customize brightness control. And one of my favorite options is the double tap to sleep. So once you enable that, you double tap the status bar and it will lock the screen. Sticking with the interface section, the next option we get is to customize our quick settings panel. We do get a quick pull down option to quickly access your quick settings, a lot of quick. And then there is also an option to add different toggles that might have not been there that you really wanted. Moving on, we next go to notification drawer and we don't get that many choices here. You can enable kind of the old style toggles that we got before as you can see right there. And I'm just going to leave that off for now. And moving on, we also do get expanded desktop style which basically gets rid of the nav navigation bar and status bar when you enable it. And then we also do get some button and layout options. And one of my favorite things to do with the buttons is to click on the little menu button at the side and add a menu button. And basically this is a lot better than having four big buttons. You just have a small one on the side and it's really useful later on. Another feature that was also added a little bit recently was the left hand mode. So when you turn it landscape, if you are left handed, then you can easily access the navigation bar now. There are some more options that you will run into in the settings, but I'm going to leave that for you guys to play around with. Guys, this ROM has been very, very stable for me. I've been using it for a couple of days now. I haven't really ran into any bugs. The only problem was we are missing some kind of vital features from HTC Sense. But otherwise, if you are looking for the stock Android experience, you finally have Cyanogen Mod right now. This does support the GSM variants. If you have a Sprint or Verizon, you'll have to check that up yourself. But ATT, T-Mobile, and International should all be good to go. Guys, the links will be down below for you to install. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.